Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut, and in this video we are going to be going over two of the best lightweight desktop environments. This video will help you pick which one is right for you, so let's get right on into it. Before we dive into the desktop environments, first we'll need to go over some of the specs and benchmarking. As they are marketed as lightweight desktop environments, many people may be looking into these for their low spec machine or a priority on low base resource consumption. Generally, their minimum system specifications goes as follows. XFCE requires at least a one gigahertz single single core processor with 512 megabytes of RAM and LXQT requires the same 1 gigahertz single core processor with at least 256 on the LXDE blog, they benchmarked XFCE and LXQT as well as a few other desktop environments. The results showed that on average, LXQT will use slightly less RAM than XFCE. If you have a system with less than one or two gigabytes of RAM, these results may be a strong consideration for you. However, it is important to point out these differences can vary widely depending on the distribution these are installed on. Next, we'll discuss the primary difference between these two and that is the toolkits that build them. XFCE uses the GTK toolkit and LXQT uses QT. Toolkits provide the overall system look and feel. They provide the buttons, toolbars, sliders, and menus when you're using various applications. Developers use these toolkits because instead of having to code all of these, they let them take care of the work, allowing them to focus on the core functionality of the application. We will deep dive more toolkits in a future video, but for now, the most important thing you need to know is that most applications and desktop environments use GTK. This is important to know if you're running a system with limited resources because depending on what applications you use it may require dependencies to run for example a gtk application in lxqt may make the slight savings in ram usage irrelevant with all of this said let's actually dive into these desktop environments and check out what they look like so to compare these two desktop environments i'm going to be using the ubuntu variants both x ubuntu for xfce and L Ubuntu for LXQT. And we're starting out here in X Ubuntu. And I will note that everything after what I've mentioned thus far all comes down to visual preference and the options within the system that you would like. So this is XFCE. Right now I have Task Manager open, and this is how you see your system resources. You can see I'm using about 13% of my memory out of four gigs. So that's right around the 500 megabyte range. So it seems to be running pretty good for this Ubuntu variation of the system. I'm going to go ahead and close that out and just kind of run through some of the applications and some of the system menus so you could go ahead and get a good grasp of what this desktop environment looks like. So this is your default menu. I haven't changed any configurations or any display settings other than resolution for both of these systems. So going through, you see you have a section for favorites, recently used applications, all applications so this will give you a full list of all the applications available on your system then you have your accessories education games graphics internet multimedia office settings and system now it does come with a good amount now this is the gtk variant so it will come with some of those applications such as gimp we have right here pre-installed but it has a good suite of applications available from the get-go has all the accessories you'd expect, such as fonts, a uh, calculator, notes, screenshot tools. If you go under multimedia, you have some pulse audio volume control, which is one of the better volume control systems within Linux. You go down to Office and you see you have LibreOffice pre-installed, so that is nice, especially for how small the file system is. And under settings, you have everything you'd expect from your appearance settings, your display, if I open this up, you kind of get a good visualization of what the windows look like. This is my current resolution. I go ahead and close this out. Go back in here, go back to settings, and you can see what else you can edit. You have a menu editor. You can do your mouse and touchpad settings. You can mess around with your panels. There is power management and a wide variety of other things you can do, such as window manager tweaks. If you go ahead and open that up, 
You do have some options to mess around with your Windows Manager. I'm gonna open up the file system just so I could kind of show you the default look of that. So you have the very traditional looking documents, downloads, everything you'd expect here with your places off to the side. All the icons look really nice. It is kind of a dated look, but not that bad. And the one thing that's really good about FXCE is it's very customizable. It does take more work than other systems such as KDE or GNOME to get looking to be modern and actually fairly good, but it is very doable. I can jump through here real quick, go to some of the files. If I go to my file system, you can kind of see what all the folders look like. It's a very smooth operating system. If I go over here to the settings and let's go to appearance, you can kind of see some of the appearance settings I'll have. So I'm going to open up this file manager again, just so you can see what's going on. And I could jump in between some of these that are preloaded on here by default. So you have a dark theme. We could go back to Graybird. You have Graybird dark, high contrast, and Numix. Now, a lot of these, these are just what's available by default. There's a way more that you can download and install. Let's set it to Graybird for now and go to icons and you can see all the icons pre-installed. There's a lot of really good ones. So you have some of the Ubuntu ones, some high contrast and the elementary XFCE. If I went with some of the Ubuntu ones, so let's go with Ubuntu mono dark. You can see it changes it to the Ubuntu icons. If I go over here under fonts, now one sec, I will note that this might be specific to this X Ubuntu variant that I'm running, but like I said, with all of these, you could go ahead and download any icon packages that you prefer. You have some font settings here, and then you have some additional settings right here. Now by default, this menu bar is up here at the top, and if I open this up again, it has the traditional uh, Windows Manager right there, but you could actually go ahead and move this around wherever you want. If you go on over here, you have a really simple calendar, a, a really simple volume control done through Pulse Audio. Right here you have your battery control. Here is your internet connections. So a lot of the stuff is a menu base like this. And then you have your notifications. And that's really about it. Like I mentioned, this desktop is highly customizable. On the screen right now, I'm kind of cycling through some pictures of some work other people have done to really make their XFCE desktop environments beautiful. It can be done, and with all this said, let's move on to LXQT. So now we are in Lubuntu running LXQT, and getting right into some of the visual differences, the first thing you're gonna notice is the start menu. It's a much older style theme. It is still nice with some icons and some pretty good organization, but it's not as intuitive and it does take a while to get to some of the settings. So for example, if I were to go over here to preferences and then go up to the LXQT settings, and it just is a big string of file systems and uh, shortcuts that I'm going through to have to find certain things. It's not that bad, but it can be discouraging for you. So for example, when I first opened this up, I had to change the resolution settings and it took me a minute to actually find it right here in the monitor settings. But the system does look good for the resources it's running at. Let's go ahead and try to find the resource monitor. So it's probably under system tools, HTOP. Here we are. So we are currently running 347 megabytes of RAM. I just booted it and it is basically at idle. So we do see a slight system improvement compared to XFCE. And if you're looking for something with even lighter memory consumption, I'd recommend checking out LXDE, which is the older version of LXQT. And systems running that usually run about half this. You can see here on the screen that I'm running Lubuntu 18 with LXDE, and that is using very little system resources. So go ahead and close this out. Uh, yes, and let's go ahead and check out some of the general theming for the file manager and the system overall So it doesn't look as good, but I mean it's really not that bad for a light system You have good looking icons Everything is super snappy and quick if we go under applications You can see kind of a preview of everything right here uh, Let's go into our settings and try to adjust some of these visual preferences So it's probably under the LXQT settings and appearance and here we have a couple different things. We have the widget style. So here you can set that. And you could also change some of the theming. Uh, under here we have the icons. So this is the default icon set. 
but you can kind of see all of the ones we have available, including some of the Ubuntu ones, since this is a Ubuntu distribution, some of the GNOME defaults, some Oxygen, and a few more. If we go under LXQT theme, we can kind of see what we have available by default. So for example, let's go to the Frost one, which is one that looks pretty good. If I go ahead and apply that, you can see it made a little bit of a difference throughout some of these. If I go to the El Ubuntu Arc, apply that, you can see it changed some of the theming down here. It's not significant, it's really just a couple different color changes with this bottom panel, but it overall adds some good options to the system that otherwise is not really that customizable. So this one did change a good amount. This might actually be one of the better looking ones out of the bunch, but like most Linux systems, you can get more themes and change almost anything you'd like to, but with this one, it will require a lot more work and more tweaking to get to those changes. We have some fonts that we could go through and some cursor effects that we could change if we'd like to as well. So let's do a quick rundown of this panel down here. Down here we have a Windows switcher, so this is your desktop. So let's say I wanted to open this file manager and go to desktop 2. This is my second virtual desktop, and then I could go over here back to my first virtual desktop. And here you have your shortcuts for some of your applications, your little Windows manager right here. So this is where they go if you minimize, maximize. And then over here you have some of your system tray icons, such as your removable media, a volume mixer and just volume rocker, a little, uh, a little Q clipper that will store your clipboard, some network settings right here, and then right here is your notifications. So you see my last one says I have no battery, so that is correct because I do not. This is a virtual machine. If I go ahead and click on options, you can change the position that notifications will pop up. And then you have some advanced settings to go through if you'd like to. Right here we have our calendar. So this actually looks a little bit better than the XFCE in my opinion. But this is one of the few things that I think this wins in. And it's not a huge accomplishment, but it does the trick. This one, as far as the included file manager, it doesn't really have a huge list of functionality, but it has everything you need to get the job done. Overall, this is a fantastic system. As I said, it's not nearly as customizable as XFCE, but I would recommend you give it a look if you want something that's a little more lightweight, especially if you're under that one gigabyte mark in RAM. And if you're really looking for something lightweight, as I mentioned, you might want to look into LXDE. Ubuntu variant with that pre-installed is this L Ubuntu, but the 18, L Ubuntu 18 will have that pre-installed and that will use virtually almost no system resources. So you could install that in a system with 512 megabytes of RAM and actually be able to do things. So when you're looking at both of these systems, really deep dive and on top of looking at this video, check out more screenshots of what people are able to do and maybe some theming tutorials so you could see what you're getting into if you do care about theming. If all you're worried about is core functionality, LXQT is a great system to go off of. Now, if you are new to Linux and you're interested in trying out FXCE, I do recommend Linux Lite as your first distro. I have a whole video on that that you could click right there to check out. So I do recommend you do that. Also the playlist with all my other Linux content. Please subscribe for more content like this. Like this video if you do. You know what to do if you don't. Have a great day and goodbye.